basically over the past uh, couple of months we've been, we've been doing together uh, a selection of memories. Yeah, we asked on Twitter, we've been asking about, about different um, people's memories. Obviously hundreds and hundreds of people have come through Jordan Hill over the years. Um, and I've spent the past couple of weeks uh, barging into staff rooms asking who went to Jordan Hill uh, in secondary and primary schools so where I didn't go to And I've got quite a few people uh, volunteering. I spent over the past day I spent about six hours sitting with teachers talking about their time in Jordan Hill. Um, and everything was pretty positive and uh, they had really interesting things to see. So that's uh, this works. <laughs> Um, okay, so the first person is Ms. McGillifrey, and she was here in 1968. Like me, she stayed at Graham House, and she was there for three years. Though it was slightly different in that they had matrons who were very strict. Um, there was no men allowed in there until, unless you were third year. <laughs> So many different people was one of her favourite things uh, about it. And another one, um, uh, Joan, who's a primary teacher, uh, did her um, PGDE through Lewis Castle College in Lewis uh, through Jordan Hill. And she said that she was only here for a couple of weeks at a time, but she loved coming down to campus because uh, of how beautiful the campus was itself and how green it was. And it, it was different just to come, to come somewhere, to come somewhere different as such as Jordan Hill. Um, another teacher that could never get away from me. Uh, she, um, I was, I, I hanged her in sixth year because uh, of a uh, school year because she said to me, I came back in the and she went, I can never get away from you. I've tried hiding for years. And <laughs> 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 um, she, I hanged her for her favourite memories from Jordan Hill. But she was here in two thousand in geography from postgrad, and she said uh, two memories really stuck out from the social studies department that. Uh, the lecturer's choice of films, a day before placement, uh, they made them watch the films Dangerous Minds, which if you're familiar with, <laughs> it's about a teacher that goes to a school in the Bronx, New York, and has a terrible time, basically. He said, we had to watch this the day before placement, <laughs> just for a lecturer's fun. And a nicer lecturer, she said, um, had them standing on tables in the day of the stove building, doing a Tai Chi before placement to de-stress. Uh, she said, at the time, she thought it was slightly crazy, but uh, she sort of sees the method of the madness. Um, the postgrad, she said, was really tough, but she loved every minute of her time in Jordan Hill and still loves teaching to this day. Um, Ali also talked to me. She's um, one, of our, one of the members that are kind of more decent. She graduated here in 2009. Um, she enjoyed her time here and has said that she's felt more prepared than other people around her. So that's something that maybe being at Jordan Hill would be a bit more. <laughs> Another person I spoke to was actually my parish priest. I stopped, they stopped me yesterday, he was cycling, and he stopped me to tell me about his time in Jordan Hill. <laughs> so I left that island, he, um, he was here in 2002, and although 
didn't quite stick to teaching, <laughs> and, well, teaching at school anyway. Um, he studied Gaelic and Adi here at Kism too, and he loved to sign in Jordan Hill, and he said that, although it wasn't for him, he thoroughly enjoyed all of his experiences here, and I think doing Gaelic and Adi here sort of prepared him, well, Gaelic did anyway, for moving to a uh, small place such as Rebecca, because he, uh, he now sort of uses Gaelic all the time. Uh, the next teacher I spoke to, who I spoke to for a few and a half hours yesterday, <laughs> um, she was here as well as um, the same as some other teachers in 1965-68, and um, she has really fond memories of her time here. It actually passed on, uh, which I can show you now, some of her uh, lesson plans, which she did in 1968, when she just when she qualified uh, for the to work. Uh, first of all was her timetable, which she, which she uh, allowed me to take with her. Um, they then um, got to choose a special subject, hers for Gaelic and needlework. Um, and she said some of the, uh, some of the little uh, women did technical skills and, and um, handcrafts. But um, it shows that well, some things have changed, but she mentioned that when she started, it was mainly, it was mainly these top of basics, you talk about your literacy and your arithmetic. And how it evolved in her practice until she retired in 2005. Uh, I've got an example of a lesson plan here, which has some similarities to what we do just now. Uh, she mentioned that um, the emphasis on the word illicit in her time, and I've heard other people mention that it was in their time as well, was um, you had to underline in your lesson plan your um, lesson verbs, uh, your intended verbs. And, it's words like illicit, where she said they really picked up on that word especially, which had to elicit everything, <laughs> even if you didn't know what it meant. <laughs> but this is it's very similar to the way that we're, um, we get our folders looked at today, because her tutor, her method tutor, as she called it, um, has written comments and she's checked all her lesson plans and things. And, but the difference is, I'll show another thing, her visual aids in her lesson plan, she had this. <laughs> Uh, on a page, and this is what she was would have drawn onto the blackboard uh, to show the children. Well, I'm sure today we would just Google Anglo-Saxon drawings and get something similar. But um, she again thoroughly enjoyed her time here. But and all these lesson plans will be available out on the stand out there for you to have a look at uh, later on. It's really interesting finding out more about the people who studied here, especially back in the 60s. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now we thank Samantha for this thing maybe. This is Mrs. Kyle. She is the furthest on the right. Um, she graduated here in 1938. And um, she, on her diploma, it says that she's a promising teacher and ever since she's been a bit sad that she'd always wanted it to have a born teacher. <laughs> they, were, um, they were told not to wear black in case you were kind of the sky, you know, uh, blended in, the black <laughs> blend into the black and you were encouraged to wear makeup as well. <laughs> then there was a Kaylee and Jordan Hill, what was but what is um, thanks to everybody. <coughs> and um, one question I've got for anyone in the audience might know um, is that none of the teachers I spoke to could remember what the Francis Tunes Hall was called before. The assembly hall. Just the assembly hall, yeah. No, everyone blanked on the names. I said the Francis Tunes, which I know was more recent. I said to them because they don't remember what it's called, but they didn't. It's just assembly called the assembly hall. Mm -hmm. um, we know that this is just a selection of few memories, and everyone's got their own different memories. And obviously, there'll be some people who'll be tweeting about it. So, if, you tweet, if you've got any own memories, tweet away with hashtag TMJOYRDHILL memories. Um, one recurring theme about everyone's time in Jordan Hall is that it was a thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyable experience from all teachers that we talked to. And everyone says it'll be really sad to see it go, but they all have fond memories of the place. 